Hey, what's up guys, Tommy here, back again with another video, and you're watching part one of my electric motorcycle build. This video took a lot of time and effort, so if you could please hit that like button and subscribe, that would motivate me to do more videos like this. Now I forgot, what exactly is it we do here again? What we do here is go back, 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 back. So first things first, let me throw on the front fork and the rear shock. So we're starting this build off with putting on the forks. The reason I'm doing this is because it will balance out the bike. So it'll make it easier so I can put on the other components later. Uh, this was pretty easy. I had to put the bearings in by myself and I didn't have the right tool. So I had to hammer them in. But overall, it was pretty easy. These are the Zoom Forgo forks. Uh, they're super cheap at only 150 bucks and they get pretty bad reviews. The reason I got them is because they look solid and they're a good placeholder. For my rear shock, I got the DNM Burner RCP2. Uh, I gotta say, for only 120 bucks, these are some pretty solid shocks. Um, to put them on was pretty easy. All I had to do was make sure they uh, fit in those two holes and then slide something in between. I don't have the correct bolts for them yet, so I'm just using these Allen keys but I think it's a really good looking shock. After I put on my rear shock, I threw on the handlebars from my Zero to Next. The reason I did that instead of getting my own handlebars is because my Zero to Next has a flat and I currently can't use it. Four days later, my most expensive package out of this whole build came at about $1,400. This includes some of the main electrical components such as the controller, motor, and everything that goes with it. Let's get right into this. We got our hub motor, brakes, throttle, controller, security keys, LCD screen, and Bluetooth. So now that we have all this stuff, you know what it's time to do. Let's get this on our bike. Now the way I put on the motor slash rear wheel was a bit inefficient. What I should have done is taken off the swing arm and put it onto the motor itself. Uh, but instead, because I didn't want to actually take apart the bike to do that, uh, I just lifted up the bike to put it onto the motor. Um, and as you can see, uh, it was a bit difficult to do, but I eventually I got it, and I used some bolts to tighten it. Now I realized later that I did this the wrong way, and I had some problems with turning the wheel, but I've since fixed it, and it's all good. So we got that rear wheel slash motor on and is just looking absolutely fantastic. Um, as you can see, these tires are totally insane. Uh, they have really nice tread. They're super thick, super wide. Um, and I'm overall impressed with it. Check that out, it's gonna look sick. Next, we're gonna route the cable uh, through and up into the frame. So to do this was easy. I basically just zip tied it to the bottom of the swing arm uh, through these little holes that are designated so you can do that. Uh, then I ran it along the bottom of the swing arm and up into the hole I made in the frame. So here's the hole right here. I used a titanium drill bit on this Milwaukee drill to drill it and it wasn't that hard. Right now I gotta widen it out so I can fit the hull sensor through there. Um, and after I can do that, I can get everything up into the frame. Uh, so I gotta get back to drilling. So it took a little while, um, but I finally got it. I drilled a hole through the bottom of the frame that was big enough to fit the cable through. And I put this little spacer in there, uh, which should do fine temporarily. Then I routed up through the frame, the inside of the frame, and there's these little zip tie things where I can zip tie the cable to the frame. Uh, but as you can see, it looks pretty nice. Also, you might notice something else in this clip. Uh, I got a surprise package today, and uh, that was my motorcycle seat. Uh, I honestly expected this to come on like the 26th or the 28th of July, but it came today. Um, and yeah, I think it looks pretty good. It's nicer than I thought it would be. So here it is on the bike. As I expected, it's angled up a bit dramatically, um, but I'm going to add some spacers in a little bit to make it a little more flat so it's more comfortable. Also, an hour after I got that package, I got my front 19 inch tire. Um, so yeah, putting this on was a bit difficult as I had to lift the bike up all by myself. 
but I managed it. it only took a couple minutes so here's the front tire uh, as you can see the tread is just as cool as the back tire I love these tires I think they're definitely worth the three hundred dollars um, because they're super high quality you know these are you know these are motorcycle tires they're not uh, bike tires and they're not cheap but they're great quality so I put on all of the uh, components onto the handlebars uh, such as the brakes and the throttle and the screen and I brought all the wires down through the frame and I of course mounted the brake right there I don't have the brake rotors yet so uh, that's kind of useless but as you can see uh, through these holes I bought all these cables and that's the e-braking for the throttle and for the LCD screen now the next logical step would be to mount the controller into the frame and get everything connected but unfortunately uh, I still need to cut off the original mounts for the controller uh, with a jigsaw because it won't fit into the frame and I need to receive my mounts that I bought separately for it. Um, so instead of mounting in the frame and getting everything wired up and organized um, because I don't have the mounts today, I'm just going to show you guys how I wire it up uh, outside of the frame. Now right here, I'm gonna show you guys how I hook up all of my electronics. And the reason I'm doing this is because I realized that a lot of you guys are probably thinking about doing a similar build yourselves. And at least when I was thinking about doing this build, you know, I saw the insides of people's frames and I saw all the wires and electronics and it was a bit intimidating. So basically what I'm gonna show you guys is that it's not very intimidating. In fact, it's actually one of the more simple parts of this whole build. Let's get right into it. Now, as you can see, we moved the bike over to my table over here. And I just want to show you guys uh, how I hooked up the controller to everything I have so far. Um, basically, all I had to hook the controller up to is the components that came with the kit, uh, which, you know, is the throttle and the LCD screen, which I didn't mount properly, uh, and the e-brake cables, which come out of the brakes. Um, and yeah, this is really easy, probably easier than you think it is. Uh, even though you see all the wires and it looks all complicated, it's actually one of the easier uh, parts of this whole thing. So you see these black cables. Uh, these are the cables um, that are coming from all of these. Um, and as you can see, you also have this cable coming out with uh, all of the spaghetti uh, coming out. And I'll explain what this is. These are the uh, female connectors uh, to where you, you know, plug your com components into. And yeah, it's pretty easy to do. You just find the right connector and you just plug it in. Honestly, I, there was no instruction needed for me. Uh, it was just, you know, plug and play really. Um, and it's just, it's really just plugging it in. Um, honestly, it's not super hard to plug the components into the controller. Uh, you know, it looks sort of complicated when you see all these wires and stuff, but trust me, uh, it's, it's a plug and play operation. Then uh, what I did next here is I took out the motor cable and I took these three wires from the motor cable. As you can see, I put green on green, blue on blue, yellow on yellow. I just kind of screwed them in. Um, and then there's also this hall sensor, uh, which is connected to the motor cable. Where is that? Yeah, right here. And as you can see, I plugged that into the controller uh, with this white wire. Um, what's this? So this is the Bluetooth thing and you just plug that in there. That's pretty plain and simple. And as you can see, uh, I don't have my battery yet. This is all pretty much plugged in uh, and ready to go. Uh, the only thing is I don't have my battery, so I can't run this thing yet. Uh, to where you plug the battery into is right here, these two things. And this is the positive and negative terminals for this controller. Uh, your positive wire goes here and your negative wire goes here. And you, uh, you know, you, you plug one here, you uh, or you screw one in here, screw one in here, then you put them into a female connector. And then from your battery, there should be a male connector that goes out and connects together. And once you connect those, you got this whole, you know, bike ready to roll. And it's gonna be totally awesome. Um, so yeah, um, I'm basically gonna get everything ready um, in the next episode. Um, so that once I get my battery or build my battery, which is what I'm going to do, I'll be able to just put it in this bike and we'll be able to go and it's going to be totally awesome. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, that's our video today. Um, you can check out this bike. It looks so cool. I put that black panel on 
It almost looks like a finished product, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to it. I also got this rear fender here, which is a Sauron extended rear fender, um, but I just modified it so it fits onto here and it fits perfectly. And this bike looks so cool. But yeah, still a lot of work to do to, to it. And we're gonna get that done in part two and then part three will be our battery build. So yeah, you guys have a great day. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a nice comment.